Before we get started on this episode, I wanted to share something that I am real excited about. I know how challenging it can be to lead change as a customer experience leader. I know because I was a CX practitioner for over a decade and I have been there. It can feel frustrating and even deflating but it doesn't have to be that way. So I put together a comprehensive workshop that has all the components I wish I had when I was a practitioner. You will learn how to be a trusted guide and avoid the frustration, the anxiety, and the stress to make a real impact. Some of the benefits of the Trusted Guide Roadmap include becoming a trusted guide for change, building relationships with key stakeholders, using a mapping toolkit, unpack unpacking your specific maturity assessment so you can prioritize CX efforts. And we're going to be using a change management model so CX leaders can be equipped on how change management works in their organization. And perhaps most importantly, we'll plan for 2024 with your CX roadmap that we'll build out. Before I formalize a master class, I would like to fine tune it. So right now I'm seeking 12 people to provide feedback in this interactive pilot session in exchange, I'm offering an early bird special price for the first 12 who register. So if you're interested in all, go visit my website, empoweredcx.com, and check out the services page, and you'll see information on the pilot workshop. Welcome to a special episode of the Delighted Customers Podcast. There has been a gap in the field of customer experience management that has felt like, for me, a black hole for many years. The gap is there hasn't been a degreed program in the field of customer experience management that is until now. In 2022, Tom DeWitt, professor of marketing at Michigan State University, had the vision and fortitude to establish the first ever degreed program in customer experience management in North America, the Masters of Science in CXM Customer Experience Management. I am honored to have recently become a member of the 15-person faculty at MSU and work on Tom's team. Today, Tom is going to share why he created the program and what the benefits are to students and employers. Let's dive right in. Welcome to the Delighted Customers Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Slayton, and I'm so glad you're here. I empower leaders to turn indifferent customers into loyal fans. I talk to guests with a wide range of expertise who share meaningful insights and wisdom. We give you practical tips and proven frameworks and share ways to help you delight your customers. Well, this episode's a little bit different. Uh, I am very excited to have on my show, the Delighted Customers Podcast, Tom DeWitt, who is a marketing professor at Michigan State University. But more than that, he had the vision to create the MSU CXM Masters of Science program. Tom, welcome to the show. Good to be here. So, Tom, uh, full disclosure, I am uh, working on your team. I am now part of the faculty there, uh, but I thought it was important enough. We had you on a, a year ago when the, that the program's first kind of kickoff phase, and uh, I thought it was important enough to share with anybody who might be interested, and that really should be anyone who has an interest in customer experience, customer experience management, this the first of its kind program anywhere that I'm aware of, just like this Masters of Science program. Number one, what white space did you see uh, for the program that one really didn't exist before? And also share maybe why a Masters of Science and not an yeah. MBA or just a yeah, Masters sure. of Arts. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, it, it all started when I was organizing our first industry conference and I was doing networking on LinkedIn and, and looking at the profiles of people working in leadership roles in CX. And what really shocked me was how people were elevated to that leadership role with very little experience. And I mean experience in terms of the broad skill set necessary to be uh, effective in managing customer the cus customer experience in an, in an organization. And the more I talked to people, it was kind of self-evident because what I kept hearing is the industry is fragmented. Um, 
And as I dug deeper, I learned it was fragmented both in terms of the individual skill set and how comprehensive it was. So someone could come from advertising, maybe they came from the contact center. Um, they didn't have much of a back background. This role has been created. Now they're now they're leading it. But it was also fragmented in terms of how the organization viewed it. You know, I'd come across like the VP of customer experience and I talked to him and they oversaw the call center. I go, okay, you know, that's where people go when they've got problems, you know, but what are you doing on the other end to design experiences that minimize customer problems? Uh, so that was a white space. I, I, you know, I did a search across Google, didn't identify any real academic programs in the US, tons of certificates. I did identify um, uh, a master's degree in, in Spain, but nothing in, in North America. And um, the reason we chose to do a master's degree um, as opposed to another certificate uh, was we don't need another certificate. The, the, the industry is mm -hmm. full of them, you know, mm -hmm. and different links, different topics and, and, and so forth. The other thing is we wanted to meet leaders where they are. So our, our program was designed for people working in the industry. It's meant to be taken part time. The, the courses are designed for that, for them to apply it to their organization. And I will mention the curriculum. You know, I would put our curriculum against any program in the world in terms of its comprehensive nature and the depth of the, the courses and what makes them unique. Um, so we have 15, fac 15 courses with 15 different faculty, 13 of, of which are industry practitioners um, who have either hold or have held senior leadership positions and are specialists in the areas that they work. And what really makes our program unique beyond, you know, it's already unique um, in that respect, 15 five-week courses over 20 months, so you never take more than one class at a time, um, is also the team-based learning model, where in, in the, over the course of two hours in a synchronous class session, um, you know, you're interacting with your, your teammates. So every five weeks, you rotate into a different team. So there's team activities like case studies. Oftentimes, you're paired up one on one as a student with your classmates to discuss your homework, which is designed to be reflective and looking at your organization. So you're learning from there as well. Um, why this degree, rather than an MBA? Well, when you think of when you think of industries, or you think of competencies in organization, like finance, accounting, marketing, they have their own degrees, don't they? And they also have their own master's degrees. So, you know, we wanted it to be, you know, um, the degree, the curriculum helps to create a foundation uh, for the industry. And the degree helps to legitimize CX uh, in the world. What we didn't need was another certificate. You know, if you ask people in CX where they learn, they learn from each other over phone calls, over Zoom, they attend webinars, they pick up books, you know, they get certificates. But all that is rather piecemeal, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. where our degree program is is comprehensive across the 15 courses and addresses a lot of organizational competencies and the employee where other programs don't do that. Um, and then the depth within each course. You know, we have, um, I think, at least six, if not seven VPs of CX in the program. And they admittedly told me when they came in, they, they came in thinking they knew everything. And they said, when they started working on homework their first week, they realized they were wrong. You know, there were still things to be learned. And and I think that's it. You know, and that's what we're trying to do with the program is taking a comprehensive approach and providing participants with all the skills they need to be a chief experience officer. You know, as opposed to an MBA, it's a crapshoot, right? I mean, you're going to have a core group of classes that are related to business and different functions. I mean, you probably have a specialization you might be able to choose, but where along the way are you developing the competencies you need to be a chief experience officer? You aren't. Um, so our, our degree uniquely does that. 
And it's just helping people to understand the value of doing a master's degree over over a certificate. It, it requires a significant yeah. investment on your part, you know, both in terms of your time and your money, obviously. Um, but it is a master's degree. It's not another certificate. So you have to look at what you're getting, the value that you're getting out of that, as opposed to doing another certificate. Yeah. So two things you said, really, just to affirm what you said is one is the team-based learning approach. Yep. Um, you're not going to be lectured to or at for two hours uh, by, the, by the professor. Yeah. It's much more um, it's much more interactive. It's much more, um, you know, you, you're, you're, you're doing a lot of your own learning. Uh, you're doing some research, you're doing some conversations with other people and learning from other people. So, so that's one, one thing is that it's very multimedia, high energy, you know, and, and not, not someone on the other hand you have access to people who really have done been there it's done amazing. that in the field yeah i mean the competition of, you. of the field it, that students is amazing so two things one yeah let me clarify team-based learning you do your work before you come to class faculty will have recorded small i wouldn't even call them lectures small presentations short presentations there's really great relevant reading there's an individual exercise generally you do often, you know, evaluating your own organization um, before you come to class. So you got tons to think about and talk about. But yeah, what students say is they learn as much or more from their classmates as they do the instructor, which to me is the ultimate compliment. And the makeup, I mentioned the vice presidents, but the majority of students uh, hold specialized roles in CX and they know their area really well, but they don't know the other areas. So what you get with those team-based learning models is, you know, you find mentors in the program, um, people who are experts in certain areas, and and the the learning is just incredible. And the bonding, um, you know, students in the program re refer to their classmates as family, and that's soon into the program. And then every five weeks, you rotate into a new team of four people, so that by the time you've graduated, you've worked with everyone several several times. And that's just amplified yeah. with the events we organize. So we have an annual conference at MSU, an in-person conference. And the day before, all the, the students are invited. First of all, the students are invited to the conference to attend free of charge. We waive the registration fee. And we have, um, I think, 36 students registered over slightly more than 50 students in the program. But then the day before, there's a what we call the MSCXM family reunion. So the faculty are there, the students are there, um, gives them opportunity to work across cohorts, get to know faculty and one another better. So yeah, the value proposition is amazing. So so we just talked about the value proposition to the students. Um, and uh, and what a great way to prepare, as you said at the top, you're, you, you know, we're often thrown in from different backgrounds into the deep end of the pool and say, go run CX. Uh, but this program really helps give you a well-rounded 360 degree, you know, view of it for the perspective or the current employer, someone thinking about funding a student through the program. What's the value to them in your, in your opinion? Look across your CX team, identify, you know, you know think about five years into the future and, and how they envision that team and what that team looks like. And then ask yourself, what are you doing to develop people to send in those roles? Where are their skills gaps? Where are their skill gaps? Um, and then to consider how this degree is going to help a fill the skills gaps and fill, you know create comprehensive you know individuals with a comprehensive set of skills, not just specialized in in particular areas. Um, and secondly, to endear their loyalty to the organization. And in that respect the value that employers get out of the program is is tremendous and we do have some employers that 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 see that so tom with that i know i know we got to land the plane here if if somebody's interested either a student or a company wants more information what's the best way for them to connect the best way is to connect with me personally i'm easy to find on linkedin tom dewitt michigan state university and just message me on linkedin and we'll set up a chat all right, Tom, thanks so much for being on the show. You bet. Thank you. 
Thanks for listening to the Delighted Customers Podcast. I'd like to ask you a favor. If you have enjoyed this episode or any of my other ones, hit subscribe or follow. I've got a lot of other great guests that are coming up and a lot of other great content, and I don't want you to miss anything. You can find any links or references on the show in the show notes, and you can find those on my website at empoweredcx.com.